Okay, third and is it the final video? We'll see. I just got this product today. This is something that you guys might know more about than I do. Apparently there is a new fear out there. Usually comes starts in California. And that is uh, electromagnetic fields. And I had a customer recently tell me that they could not use a light in their house because it emitted too much electromagnetic fields. The actual circuitry in the house, the wires in the wall, um, emitted too much EMF. And I've heard it a couple, a couple more times since then, so I thought I'd get myself an EMF tester. <clears throat> now, I don't know really anything about them. I don't even know what units they're measured in or what's safe and what's not safe. So if you guys know about EMF problems or safety, tell us all about it in the comments section. Tesla and some word I can't really pronounce. G-A-U-S-S. -S. Gauze? But I'm going to put it up here towards, show you what this reading, actually it's kind of zero. Has the GoPro got any EMFs? Don't think so. Um, point it over this way. We're going up towards this light. See if it works. Oh, it does. Now I'm going to test this, uh, my 220 5,000 watt uh, electric heater here. I put it up here without it on. It's reading point zero zero UT. Now we've got little m big G is another unit of measure. Uh oh. Set the alarm off. It's climbing. Still climbing. Oh geez. Better get back. Holy cow. I'm gonna die. Turn that off. So if anybody knows, this red 400, little m, big G. As you can see right up there, little m, big G. Of course, it went back down to zero, zero. Now the questions that I'm supposed to be answering, uh, I did answer most of them, like responded to the comments, um, but I'll pick out two again. Um, one was, uh, why are you painting? Or they made comments, oh, that's good that you're painting, pre-painting everything. All six sides of the soffit and the fascia are primered, pre-painted with primer. What that does is it seals the wood and it's going to make it last longer than if it's not painted. And that is for a case, you know, 50 years in the future, um, the roof, whatever roof is on there is starting to deteriorate. Um, no one's cleaning the gutters and things are get backing up. It'll last just a little bit longer. The first one lasted 62 years. And um, having good paint, modern quality paint, and good caulking, the Dynaflex 230, which I talk about in this video. The next question that some people brought up, but it is something to know when you're doing soffit and fascia, uh, as well as a roof is you have to have adequate ventilation and there is a basic formula and I'm just going to tell that to you but you can just google it and figure it out uh, you take the square footage of your attic and you divide that by 150 and that's going to give you the square feet of ventilation that you're going to want to use now your soffit vents or the actual hole that you cut you can figure out how many cubic feet or not cubic, square feet, are in that hole. And that's uh, in inches, I usually measure in inches, it's a length times width, and then you divide that by 144 because there's 144 square inches in a square foot. The soffits that I was putting in came out to be like 0.88 square feet. Well, that, that's how you, you calculate soffit vents. It's not a rocket science, the roof isn't gonna blow off if, you, if you're one short or two short. Now. If you're like 10 short, you're going to have some ventilation because it's not going to be able to suck in as much as it's going out. Oh, and the roof vents should match the soffit vents so you have equal in and out.
Well, it's nine o'clock and almost everything has coat of primer except three fascia boards. And I should be able to get those sometime tonight. Hopefully I'll get some actual color paint on this stuff late tonight. I've got to get installing it tomorrow. Well, there are no exterior outlets on this house anywhere. So instead of going in through a window and having to feed it in and feed it out at the end of the day, I'm pretty sure this light switch is turned on. There's a random switch in this bedroom and it's on. So there's hot there. So I'm just going to put this outlet in there and this is what I will be plugging my extension cord in to for today. This is my supervisor right here. <laughs> Hi. Good doggy. All right, there's my power. Uh, this here just shows an example of how I work by myself, and there's nobody on this end lining it up with 16 inches from this fascia to here. So when I put this piece of fascia up, the last piece, it'll butt right up tight to this one. And this was my stopper when I put this first piece in. Brought uh, Polly along. Hey, come out and say hello. <laughs> She's not too sure about all this wood flopping around over her head. How's it going? Um, okay. Just gonna ride my lap the rest of the way. Good girl. <laughs> I got uh, some 14.3 strapped to that pipe just right at the strap. It goes up and loops around the ground, which is also the anchor. This is my helper for the day. I wanted to give a little update on the progress and how surprisingly easy it's going working with this metal awning thing. 
I've got it all off, all the soffit and fascia off, all the way around. And this is how I'm reinstalling it. Uh, I actually just brought this piece up here and went back down to get the camera. So I'll set this on top of this because wiggling it up and around, you could easily scratch the paint off. So I'll go down below and get on the ladder and slowly scoot this over without dragging it on the metal roof and nail it into place. And we'll just continue on down the line. So all the soffit, all the fascia, the trim isn't on yet. There's a little bit of scribe trim that goes at the soffit to the brick. That's not on yet, but the entire house is installed. The awning section um, <laughs> wasn't that bad. I kept waiting to run into a major problem that was going to slow me down. Uh, and it just never showed up. Um, so total for this awning section, I've got five hours into it. Um, for loosening and, and putting up the, the temporary supports and new soffit and fascia, which isn't bad. And that's like a whole quarter of the house done in five hours. And that was the difficult part. So I don't have hardly any time into this. And I budgeted a lot of extra time. I thought I was going to struggle doing it by myself, but it's been going super fast. Um, next is this two car garage. I can get almost all that from standing on my feet and that should go really quick. I'll give you another uh, guess view of this project of what goes on in the workshop. Um, You've seen quite a bit of what I've been doing at the house, but this is all the soffit for the garage. It's 11 and a half inches. I get four pieces per sheet of plywood, and I'm almost done sanding. I primer everything, both sides, and then I sand just the, the side that's gonna get the color coat. And if we go into this room here, this is the this is the trim that gets put up on the underneath side where the fascia and the brick wall meet. This is definitely not enough to finish the house. I think this is only a hundred and some odd feet right here. But this will get primered both sides. It's actually almost time to flip it over and, and start primering the, the, the finished side here. I always primer the, uh, the unfinished side first 
so that if I do flip it over and it gets marked up or it's not quite dry yet, it's not a big deal because you're never gonna see it. So this will get primered tonight and then tomorrow morning before I go to the house, this will get a color coat and all of those will get a color coat. Then I'll just start, <laughs> just start. Then I will start dismantling the garage gutters. We get all the gutters off tomorrow and if things go well, I may get all the, uh, the soffit and fascia off the garage as well. What is tomorrow? Tomorrow's Thursday. And then Friday, it's possible I could get all the soffit and fascia fully installed. And if I can, because I work at, work at night too uh, here, I got to get all that trim, a lot more of that trim, and to get it all primed and painted. So that I can go all around the house and all around the garage. It's the last day of my soffit and fascia job. Everything is installed. And today what I'm gonna be doing is uh, wrapping my corners with this flashing, uh, caulking all my seams and nail holes. And the caulk I'm gonna be using, uh, it's, it's Dynaflex 230. Uh, they sell this at both Lowe's and Home Depot. Um, waterproof, um, the big, benefit to this is uh, superior flexibility and it does have a lot of flexibility and it doesn't crack um, you can fill gaps up to an inch thick of course that's that's a lot of caulking you probably wouldn't want to go more than an eighth or, or a quarter at the most uh, if you got bigger gaps you should probably cut a new piece of wood but this is what's going to keep everything sealed up and no cracks It's time to give an update on the uh, soffit and fascia job. When I get a little bit behind schedule, I got to turn the camera off and just get to work. Now, when I mean get behind schedule, it usually has to do with the customer requesting me do more work. And on this job, there's maybe an, another thousand dollars worth of work done to the, to the duplex in a couple days. Um, anyways. I'm getting ready to do the soffit vents and I wanted to show my little template on how I just can quickly mark out the right uh, dimensions that need to be cut out and how they're consistent and they're, they're the exact you know measurement off of the front side of the fascia all the way around the house. So I'm going to put this GoPro on my head That'll look real, real entertaining to the people who live here. Um, put this GoPro on my head and just show you how I quickly can mark out the house for where all the soffit vents need to get cut in. Uh, another thing I wanted to point out is I always, of course this one's kind of faded off, have a list, a running list uh, and a daily schedule so that I can be as productive as possible. Right now, I'm about 20 days in. 
uh, of working consecutively and that that'll probably run to around 35 days um, that's just how you got to work when you work by yourself is sometimes the work really loads up and you have to work seven days a week and those are usually averaging around 14 hours per day uh, there's no such thing as a 40-hour work week now uh, there's no such thing as only working five days a week <laughs> pay attention to what I'm doing uh, got that one down to a minute and 30 seconds I uh, upgraded to a 2 amp hour battery for some reason this one really spins this thing up and gets it moving faster well there you have it um, it's all in so all been in the gutters still are not in and that's gonna be another two weeks before they say they can get there, but I don't, I'm not keep holding my breath on that. Any questions again, leave them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Oh, and if you know anything about EMFs and how dangerous it is, let me know because uh, I'm gonna put this into my toolbox and uh, keep it around so the next time someone brings up uh, EMFs uh, at a, a customer's house, I can say, well, you know what, I can, I can use my tester and, and tell you, uh, you know, how dangerous it is. I don't know if I'd feel comfortable telling someone that their light is dangerous or their heater is dangerous. I'd probably just give them the units that this thing is spitting out and they can do their own research on whether they want to do something about it. Hit the like button and subscribe. Goodbye.